And fishing and method, I don't do nearly enough these days. That's a little cage feeder up to the island in front of me. Now, I think in the area of poles, it's very easy for us anglers to get, I'm going to call it polaritis. We just love fishing poles because it's such an efficient way of catching fish. But at this time of year, very difficult to beat fishing a cage feeder up to a feature like an island. Now, I've only bought two baits with me today, essentially. One of them is Fuka bait, and I'll cover that in a second. And the other one is ground bait, but you do need a little bit of ground bait just to plug your feeder with. And obviously it just helps you to create that column. So I've used the Tom Thick Sweet Skimmer Mix today. I've mixed it on the dry side because what I'm doing is casting very regularly. And as I said, trying to build a column of bait through the water. So once my feed has been in the water for a minute, I've got a little indication there, so I might leave this another couple of seconds, but basically any longer than about a minute and a half, and I'm winding in and recasting, so I'm constantly feeding my swim and building that column of bait through the water. So I've not had a bite, I'm going to pick up and reel in. Oh, I did. I managed to, managed to tempt one as I twitched it then, I think. It's the way to do it. I want to reel this in, I'm just going to run through the rig and talk to you about the tackle that I'm using. I think this might be one of them silver bream. I've had some lovely silver bream today. Lovely. Right, so the rig. Free running feeder on the line. Very important it's a free running feeder. That means if you hook a bigger fish or if it gets stuck or if anything takes, um, you know, snaps your, your main line, it can pull, pull the hook through and not be dragging a feeder around, around, with, around with it. So that's a feeder running on the main line down to a swivel bead at the top of a twizzled loop. So all the twizzle loop does is keep that hook length, which is obviously lighter line than the main line, away from the feeder and prevents tangles. And then I've got about a 50 centimetre hook length there of 014 fluorocarbon. It's a Drennan Suplex fluorocarbon to a size 16 F1 pellet hook. Now that probably sounds quite fine, and it is really. At this time of year, the water's still very, very clear. And although the fish want to have a chew, I mean, it's about eight degrees today, nine degrees, they still are on the cute side. Incidentally, I have at times today had a couple of brilliant spells and I thought I'll definitely get away with stepping up and I've tried to put a bigger hook and thicker hook length on and uh, I've just stopped getting as many bites. So it's definitely proved correct. You know, fish light, you'll land anything you hook on this sort of gear anyway, if you take your time. You don't have to pull your head, the heads off, we're only pleasure fishing, you know. Just about taking your time and landing what you hook. You can see all the time I'm getting regular indications and I actually missed that bite there. I've got to just switch from a, a bigger piece of white two-in-one on the hook, one of the five mil standard size pieces to a micro. I've had quite a lot of fish on a micro today and I think that's because obviously it's still a nice small hook bait but because you've got plenty of hook exposed you seem to hit more bites. So a nice positive cast out to where I've found earlier, that nice flat area um, that I found on the bomb. I've used my line clip, so I'm clipped up in that spot and a far back marker, so I'm dead accurate with my casting, which is important. So all the time, again, we're building that column of bait through the water. Tightening up to your feeder, you've just got to be quite careful how you do this. The idea is that you're constantly in touch with what's happening on the bottom, so you're constantly got some sort of bend on your tip so you can see if something picks up your bait. Like I can see something's just either knocked the feeder or given me a little, little bit of a bite there. Sort of an occupational hazard with this style of fishing. Because we are building that column of bait and drawing a lot of different fish into the peg, you can expect a lot of indications on the tip and it's difficult to know what a bite is and what isn't sometimes. Two key things to look for. The first is obviously a sudden fast sort of pull round that stays there. That's normally obviously fish on. Any sort of little plucks or taps there generally the line bites. But the best kind of bite and my favourite kind, the one that this lovely little silver bream gave me, it's a hybrid actually, is when the tip just taps like that. And that tells you the fish has picked up the hook bait and it's actually just shaking its head. And you know you've not struck it too early when you have to use a disgorger to uh, get the hook out. And then it's just a case of keeping the rod nice and low. Don't pull the reds off and enjoy it. This is a lovely way of fishing. It's busy, 
it's active. Although I think, as I said, we'd catch probably some bigger carp if we fished a pellet feeder or a hybrid feeder today. We'd be waiting a lot longer for bites, and to be honest, we wouldn't have as much fun as we have doing this. Being active, keeping that bait falling through the water, and catching fish. Lovely bite. Feels like it might be a slightly better skimmer, actually. Don't know whether it's just woken up this, whether it might be a... Yeah, it's a bigger skimmer. I don't think it's a carp. When I get this fish in, I'll just run through with you. A few pointers on feeder type as well, because... As I realised when I went into the tackle shop this morning, or was reminded of, should I say, there's that many different kinds on the market nowadays. Can be confusing, knowing what to... Uh, what to go for. See what this is. Lovely fish, that is. Let's have a look at him. Look at that. Lovely. Right, quick run through on feeder type. And then I'm going to catch one more fish and go home and have some tea. As I said, it's only a short afternoon session but that's the beauty of this kind of feeder fishing all you need is some ground bait which obviously you can keep in a, a packet dry at home some fuca bait likewise which you can take out the cupboard and off you go fishing there's no need for any live baits at all really it's uh, nice and simple and easy so feeder types right cage feeders i'm going to show you the ones that i uh, found while sorting through the collection this morning so the one I'm using today is, I'll show you, it's a three square feeder land cage feeder, 30 gram. Now, a couple of key points on it, it's similar to this one in that there's no bevels inside it. That's important when you're fishing with Fuca because if you fish with a grip mesh feeder like this one, which is great when you're fishing with baits like casters and hemp and that sort of thing, as it holds the bait in the feeder, with Fuki, you tend to find it sticks on the on the points in the feeder and don't come out properly. So make sure you've got a nice standard um, cage feeder. The other kind that's available are these, which aren't perfectly round. They're a flat edged type feeder. And these are perfect for when you're fishing up to islands because they sit on the slope nicely and they don't slide down the slope. But to be honest, I only really use them if I'm fishing on a very severe slope. On days like today when it's not too bad out there, I feel my feed is holding okay on that sort of gradual slope I mentioned earlier. I don't think you need to go to those lengths. And the other kind of feeder, of course, is these. These are a winder feeder. These are perfect if you're fishing in really deep water, but obviously, as I've explained, that's not what we're looking to do today. So, for this sort of fishing, make sure you get a standard sort of three or four cage, uh, three or four square cage feeder on the hook I've been alternating it really. That last one was on a, a bigger piece of two-in-one, I think. I've had quite a few today on a micro as well, so a nice small hook bait. A little bit on the weight of feeder now. This one's a 30 gram, which is about perfect today. I like a little bit of weight when I'm fishing up to an island as it just helps me, again, tighten up to the feeder without moving it. You don't need to go to 40 five or 60 gram or stupidly heavy in terms of feeder size as what you find happens if you fish too heavy a feeder when you're winding fish in often the weight of the feeder can bounce the hook out of the fish and likewise if you go too light maybe a 20 or a 15 gram feeder you wouldn't be able to tighten up your line to the feeder as quickly without pulling it down the slope so i might use a, a lighter feeder I was fishing maybe on a shallower venue in open water. It's another fish, I think. I said one more. I really did ought to go, but it's just such lovely fishing. I might have one more cast. What's this one? Seems like we've got some proper skimmers in the peg now. The silver bream that we were catching earlier seemed to have uh, seemed to have backed off. Don't want to complain about catching them though. 
So one key thing to think about when it comes to creating competition in your peg is the amount of bait you feed. So you can see that that feeder now is absolutely rammed with Fuca Micras and just sort of capped off really with ground bait, just enough ground bait to hold that bait in there until it hits the water and starts falling through. At the start of the session though, I had a lot less bait in that mix. Mixed up about two pints, I reckon, two and a half pints of the Tom Thick um, F1 and Skimmer ground bait. And added about 100 red and 100 white, two in one micros to it in total. So we were probably about five or six micros per feeder full at that time on the same feeder. But by not feeding as much bait at the start of the session, what you do is encourage fish to compete for what bait's there. And that gets you fast bites. If you have too much bait in your peg, you end up with a situation often where the fish and mooching about on the bottom and can be a bit more selective and be a bit more fussy. So it's just about getting that critical balance of bait right so that you know there's enough there for the fish to, to still compete and you're able to control where you're wanting them to feed. So by adding more bait to it, what I've been able to do is push the fish down to the bottom now because we know that there's more bait getting to the bottom, we know all of it's getting eaten, and that in turn has meant we're getting faster and more positive bites. So we've got the fish feeding where we want them to feed. Well, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to make that the last fish of the session. I've really, really enjoyed myself today. And uh, I think, it's probably a lesson there for me as well, really. Sometimes it's nice just to leave the pole at home and have a day catching fish on other methods. So key points to remember with this. Keep casting dead regularly. It's not a method this for sitting on your hands and waiting like you might do with a method feeder. It's about regular casting, building a column of bait through the water and keeping your hook bait falling through the water as well. For that reason, we don't want to introduce too much feed too early in the session. You can see now my mix is absolutely rammed with micros. But early on, there was probably only a quarter of that quantity of micros to ground bait. So make the fish compete for the bait that you're introducing. And then as the day goes on, you'll be able to put more bait through your feeder and force the fish down to the bottom. Hope you've enjoyed that, folks. Get out and give it a go.